Hi guys, this is Rob from RV Travel Buddy and RV Travel Quest. I'm going to attempt <laughs> to tell you what equipment we use to film all the different shows we do. So, the first thing I want to talk about before I talk about all these cameras is <laughs> it's taken us a while to get all this equipment. So, uh, it took us years and years to get to this point. But, uh, some of the main things you want to have is <laughs> is to support all these cameras is I'm going to talk about supporting equipment. So the first thing I want to tell you is I'm using two tripods. We also have two mono sticks and mono sticks are just great for doing selfies. You can use them for just stabilizing your shot when you're hiking and things like that. So mono sticks are nice to have. <laughs> the other thing that's really important is lighting. So I'm actually lit up. You can probably catch a little bit of it. I uh, kind of left it in the frame so you could see it. But we use these little studio lights. They're LED. What I like about them is they're battery operated and they're really nice to have in the RV. And it makes it a uh, easy to store and I can pull them out quickly and do an indoor shot and I don't have to worry about it being too dark. So gotta have lights guys. <laughs> Another thing, <laughs> I'm not going to take all this stuff out. This is actually a tripod boom mic. So this is one of those mics where you has a big bar on it and the mic's at the end and it has a weight at the other end and when we're doing a uh, uh, you probably saw, we used them a lot on shows when we use green screen. We use a boom mic, you can't see it at, uh, when we're using it, but uh, they're above our heads or out of the frame so you can uh, do really good tutorials if you need, need to. So, <laughs> of course to have that you have to have a really good mic and there's a, I have a kit that goes with that mic. So, I'm going to break away from this later after I'm done with all this and tell you how we do our podcast. <laughs> it's just insane. So, let's talk about what we have, to, Sherry and I do. We have all kinds of equipment. I'll give you a little peeks at them. Uh, I'll try to put some links in the description below of some of these items we use. And so here we go. So the other thing you also want to make sure that with everything we buy, everything we use, is everything has batteries. So if they have their own batteries, we get more than one. We always have, if we have a Canon camera, we have more than one battery for that. We constantly keep two to three batteries charged up all the time for everything we use. If we don't use that, we also keep a lot of batteries. <laughs> this is just one case. Several cases of batteries for the LED lights, uh, some of our, uh, like our Brino, I'll be showing you shortly, takes batteries. And just little things you just find you're using batteries all the time. So the next thing I'll talk about is I'll, I'll go with the little guys and work my way up, I guess. So I love this camera right here. This is a GoPro. And it's the GoPro is good. I mean, I just like GoPros are great. I would say that's the best beginner camera if, if you need for action. Um, if you're doing vlogging, then you want something like a little Canon and Sony's uh, with a little flip up screen. <laughs> but for GoPros, these are great because you can leave it in the car. Uh, <laughs> don't leave them in the car all the time. And this little guy is so multi purpose. It's I'm just uncanny and we use a special little tripod on here that opens up and we use it for selfies when we're talking we can set it on the ground set it any way we want on this little tripod and also when we're driving in the truck instead of we do have a attachment on our windshield to hang this upside down and do shots out the window most of the time we just put it up in the dash because we have a big truck and we have a big dash set it on there and just turn it on and you most of the pictures you see of us going down the road is just sherry putting this on the dash and recording for two three four minutes and then we'll get little 
clips of the different areas we're driving in and that's this thing is so multi-purpose it's used the most is this setup right here uh, the problem with is I've talked about is there's two types of videos that are out there one is kind of your action spontaneous kind of videos and those are hard to create special effects or anything like uh, well not special effects but a production it's hard to make those with that kind of film um, when I say special production you know when you watch the videos where we're driving our car up we're parking the car you see us get out we, you, you see the, the, cha the change in the screen every time you see us walking up to the RV you see us opening the door you see us getting in those are all separate production shots then we put them all together to tell a story so you'll find if you're going to be recording for your audience you'll find that you'll be doing a lot more spontaneous videos I try to do a mix uh, hard to, hard to find the time to do production videos but we do do them and they're fun to do and we don't necessarily use these kind of cameras to do that however these are great for let's say I'm driving down in a park and I want to show you guys my car driving down towards the, the park uh, the road I'll get out of the car set this up on a garbage can or something and point it down the road then I'll turn it on run to my car back up about 200 feet and drive forward again and boy if you want your neighbors to talk to you funny they'll say you're nuts anyway these little guys I can throw it out mount it really quick and I'm ready to record and then grab the camera again move it to the parking lot and then you can see me pull into the parking lot grab the cam you know, camera bring it back in take all those different shots or you could buy 10 GoPros and <laughs> that's a lot of money and set them all over the parking lot and uh, be, be lucky that nobody steals them the other thing is we have two GoPros so this GoPro is on our gimbal and uh, this little gimbal let's see if I can get it to work for you is kind of a neat little bugger they have to kind of but what we use this for is like when we're going down trails and you're kind of bouncing a lot and things like that it's kind of nice because you can keep a nice smooth shot um, not always reliable not always the easiest camera to grab and go uh, I try to use it when I can but we also the problem with uh, gimbals is um, not only mine but several other gimbals there's electronic interference with the audio so you tend to have to put a adapter in and put a lapel type of mic on or any other kind of mic that'll fit this so that a buzzing sound will go away uh, so the only problem with that is it also kind of plays havoc with the the motors on the gimbal so you really have to have a controlled situation of really maintaining your your GoPro and your gimbal at the same time these are not cheap they're about $200 um, they're nice and they definitely uh, improve your shots and smooth things out but not necessary right away so the next camera I'm going to tell you about is we're going to switch to another camera so you can see it. it's called the Canon Vixia so I'm recording on a GoPro so you can see what the main camera is that we're using to record this show we're using a Canon 600 Vixia and we have a wireless mic attached to it and the wireless mic is actually hiding up here above my head so you can hear me better we're also using a LED light down below here that's battery operated great for RVs so that's how we're doing the show itself okay so now that you've heard about the Canon Vixia that little camera we like is because when we go out it's really small and it does a for a small guy it does a big job including this show and uh, what's nice about it, it has really good audio you can plug audio into the side of it and, uh, and we showed you we have a wireless mic on that and we have a wireless mic hanging up here that probably you wouldn't have noticed until I po <laughs> pointed to it and so this helped improve the sound a little <clears throat> I have a little bit of a cold today so I'm sorry if I'm kinda coughing a little 
And so the Vixia is nice because it also zooms on things. So we get out on the beach and let's say you see a really nice lighthouse in the distance. A GoPro's, it'll be a spec. So then we'll break out the, the cannon like we just showed you. Break that out and do a shot of, um, and zoom in. Uh, hopefully you have a mono stick or something to keep it steady. But that's the other thing about the Canon is it has the stabilization in it. So it really helps uh, make your shot a little bit less shaky. And you really need that when you're zooming in. And that can, uh, the Canon is so nice because I can put it in my front pocket and hike down to a beach or a trail and have that as a backup for zooming in on really cool things. Maybe it's a really cool bird or maybe it's a really cool uh, uh, eagle we see and a GoPro is not going to get that. So those are the three main cameras we use for spontaneous shooting. So the Canon we carry, the one that I showed you earlier, we can't carry in this little bag. And in this little bag, like in all these, and I'm not going to show you everything that's in it, we always keep a charger, we always keep an extra battery charged up, and sometimes we have lens filters for certain different cameras. So, uh, lots of stuff to keep track of. So, the one thing that people always want to ask me about is the 360 videos. <laughs> 360 videos is new and we're still kind of learning how to market them and how to appeal to folks. We have like folks that just like 360s and they look for 360s and, and, and that's great. Our normal subscribers are used to our normal videos. So we've created what's called 360 Fridays. And so just that day is when we launch all the 360 videos we took that week and they don't necessarily tell a story as they are as we try to kind of set the scenario and let you enjoy the, the view because you can see 360. And you ask yourself, what does that camera look like? <laughs> and this is it. That's it. It's uh, in a little sleeve. And it's called uh, a 360. It's one of, uh, um, it's made by uh, Theta which is T-H-E-T-A. Uh, the reviews on this particular uh, 360 is awesome. Before these cameras, you used to have to buy like six to 10 GoPros and put them on this special device. Then you had to have software to merge all those different films together. And it was just unheard of and very expensive. A camera like this costs about $350. Uh, which sounds great. Oh, I'm going to run out and get one, but think twice before you do 360s. Uh, you have to edit them differently. You have to upload them to only certain platforms. They can only be played on YouTube platforms and Facebook. And if somebody's looking at a, if you embed one of your videos on like your website and someone plays the video from your website, the 360 won't work. It's got to move, they've got to click on the little icon that moves them to uh, YouTube. So when they're on that platform, it will show it as a 360. So it's new, it's cumbersome. Those are kind of techies, love it. And if you're new to learning how uh, 360s, I urge you to just realize when you watch them, you have to make sure you're on YouTube and you have to make sure your viewer is set for high definition 720. So they're fun, neat camera. We are not going to stop using it just because a handful of people haven't figured out how to view them. I just urge people to say, learn how to watch 360s because they're just fascinating. And so uh, just remember that our 360 videos always come out on Fridays and our regular videos are always going to be all the other days. So. We also do what's called 360 moments on Facebook. So you can kind of, they're kind of teasers, so you can kind of see what's coming up for the week. So that's the 360 camera. This is not going to be easy, folks. <laughs> but, so the next thing I want to tell you about is what's called the Brino. And the Brino, and this is how, this is the only way to stay organized, a bag for everything. By the way, all of our bags have the name of our camera on the top of them in white. So I can tell this is the Brino. 
The Brino is a special camera just for time lapse. Make sure I give you some room to see stuff here. So this device here is called the Brano. The Brano is just designed to do time lapse. And yes, the GoPro will do time lapse, but this baby, not only that, I have different lenses for this. And I can pr and it has sensitivities. I can change the exposure. I can pre-program it to go from day to night to day. I can set it out all day long, all night long, and it'll do the job. It has uh, smart technology in it to allow me to set my target, set my... I can tell the camera it's going to be starlight. I can tell it's going to look at the moon. It's going to go twilight, whatever, uh, whatever the scenario is. And it will uh, program itself and do some of the pre-settings for you. You can override the settings any time. The other thing is, I don't know if I can show it to you, the Brino also has, ah, welcome to my world, a, a case just like the GoPro to put it, make it waterproof, which is nice because sometimes you'll set this out all night and don't realize it's gonna rain in the morning. Be glad you have a waterproof case for it. So that is what we call the Brino. And it's a great camera. Um, as you can tell, don't drop them. <laughs> um, I'm trying to work fast here. It's important to me to stay organized and to get things put back when we're done using it. And uh, <laughs> that's that. So bear with me because there's a lot of stuff to show you here. <clears throat> the next b bag we have here is not another camera. It's the so <laughs> Jeez. Um, <laughs> it's the support bag. I told you this wouldn't be easy. This is the support bag for GoPro. So all these GoPros, you know that you can put them on your head, you can clamp them to things and stuff. All of our parts and clamps and support, I remember how this one opens, is in this bag. <coughs> so from different kinds of mounts to different kinds of cases, um, all kinds of devices are in this bag. And if I know I'm going to do a lot of GoProing for that day on a hike or something, this bag comes along with us. So, with all this stuff, you got to have the support equipment. The next thing I want to talk about is a DSLR. So, this is my little pride and joy. <coughs> this is a my T3i Canon. Uh, it does videos. And if you ever watch some of my green screens that I've done in the past, also if you ever watch Paradigm Chimes, I use this camera. Very nice quality. Really nice to do my green screens with. Um, this is a wonderful camera. We also do what's called painting by light with this camera because you can change your settings and you have to have long shutter speeds at nighttime and paint by light. It's a lot of fun. So, of course, to have this, we have not only the one I just showed you, but we carry another set of wireless mics. So whatever we're doing, if we have to do something from a distance, sound isn't an issue because the wireless mics will take care of that. But, you know, in here you got all your extra batteries. We keep a uh, uh, time-lapse controller in here. Uh, little cures, things that we need. Pretty much anything we need is in this bag. <laughs> so these cameras, not necessary to start out. You don't need this. You got this, you're good to go. You can grow as you go, but this is the <laughs> pride and joy of, uh, of not only video, but really good um, still photos. 
Sherry has a um, EOS, uh, I don't remember what model this is, um, 35 millimeter Canon. What's nice about this camera, and by the way, this is a little device we use for time lapse for that camera, is she has two cameras. She al uh, also has, <coughs> sorry for the mess, a Sony Nexus camera, which I bought her because we bought this particular camera, her Canon, back in 2000, uh, 2008. That was Cinder. And I got this one like a year and a half ago for her. And what I liked about it is the Sony, that you see these at Best Buy, there's a new model of it, is we just ordered it, but you can put Canon lenses on this Sony with an adapter. We just ordered the adapter, and it'll be in actually this week. So now all the lenses she uses for this camera, she can now put on here. It looks kind of funny when you put a big 200 millimeter lens on this thing. But what's really nice about these Sonys is they really bring out the color um, and it's so easy to use. Uh, she has a viewfinder on it here so this camera would be good for doing vlogging. Uh, it's not a cheap camera, it's probably about $600. Uh, the other thing is she uh, it takes videos. She uses a electronic um, viewfinder on, her, on this camera that just comes out here, plugs on the top. So one of my biggest complaints, and I'll, you'll hear me talk about it later here, is uh, when we get glare in these view, uh, these screens here, and you can't see nothing. And so I don't know how many times we've done really nice pictures of mountains and stuff, and I can't tell if I'm on the target. Um, so she doesn't have that trouble because she has a viewfinder and she can get, ar uh, get around that. So that's the two cameras that, well, the three cameras, my 35 millimeter DSLR, Sherry's Canon SLR, and then it's the Sony Nexus camera. We're, we're knocking them down here, guys. We're getting there. <laughs> Got a big mess back here. Uh, rule one, try to put this stuff away as you use it and pull it out. I know it makes my video longer, but trust me, it's so much equipment, it's important to put things away. So, the next thing I'm going to switch over to is how we do our podcasts. So I'm going to have to change screens here in a minute, but I want to start off with podcasting. So, some people will do videos once a week on YouTube and they call out a podcast. A real podcast is a production that you do, and they must be done in a certain way, which uh, um, are audio, and now they're going over the video. <laughs> and we're just doing audio podcasts, and you know the show as RV Talk Radio. So it's when you start doing podcasts, it's, it's, first you've got to find out if you really want to do it. So don't spend all the money first until you're sure that podcasting is for you. We've been very fortunate RV Talk Radio is growing. People seem to like it. And we're trying to get better and better at it. So thanks to you, we've invested a lot of money, as you can see, in our camera equipment, but also our audio equipment. I've got to switch over to the uh, different view to show you that. So when you do podcasts, it's critical that you use a, the right kind of MP3 recorders and that's also when you make a podcast that's what you're listening to is an mp3 so it's important that you have software to support that so i'm not going to talk about the software so much but i am going to talk about how we do interviews <laughs> so when you do an interview you want a good recording um, piece of equipment and what we use is what's called the roland five and it's just a small unit has two speakers on here and it records an mp3 these are what some of the big boys use for podcasting 
Um, before we started podcasting, we also took a lot of classes and studied a lot of other podcasts before we started ours. This is the, is the suggested mobile um, audio tool that they recommend. One is it works really well. Two, it's very sensitive. You can run different types of mics on it. Um, it can be used for other things than just podcasts. Some people make their videos and narrate them with this and, and, and synchronize their audio with their video with these. Uh, but you can use the microphones right here. So a lot of times when we do an interview, we'll just put a cell phone down and lay this next to it and do the interview like that. We are going to get a module eventually that we can actually use a phone line and patch our interviews on the phone through our software. But um, <laughs> when you live in an RV, we're limited on space and we do have a mixer and things. But where do you say enough is enough? You know, the quality is good enough. We always want to make it better and better. But if you get a Roland 5, you can get these from Amazon. I'll put a link on it. Roland 5 is a great audio recorder. It is uh, the best thing I can say is look it up. I'll put a link on the description and you can learn more about it. But this is what we use for interviews and mobile interviews. This thing's so sensitive, I can go to a park, set this on a picnic table, and pick up the whole crowd and hear everybody clearly. So it's really a good piece of equipment. So that's called the Roland 5. And once again, it's got its own bag and headsets and everything else. So <laughs> also what's important if you have a business or if you've got a channel every bag we have that if we're out in the field we keep our business cards in here uh, anything that people might want to ask in information try to keep pins and paper nearby in case I got to write down information of people's names or their businesses and I won't be able to edit the, the video or audio for a couple weeks it's easy to forget um, I know sometimes you might think, oh, I'm forgetful or whatever. We are just overwhelmed with so much thing, so many things to do that I know we, we start sounding kind of flaky. And we're pumping out videos almost every day now. And so I don't know how long we'll keep that up, but that's <laughs> kind of the problem. Staying organized and having the time to do all this. So... Before I go over to the podcast side here, I'll show you in a minute. Um, I just want to remind everybody that we enjoy what we're doing and we uh, have taken time and invested this money into the stuff. You don't need all this. The GoPro is a great way to start or a simple Canon or Sony. Uh, I'm not sure what the name of them, but um, uh, a lot of people use them for about two, three hundred dollars. You can get one camera to pretty much take care of everything until you're really convinced you like what you're doing. Then you can grow with this stuff. Uh, podcasting, start with simple microphones, simple software. If you start one up, it, it sounds really nice. I want to have a podcast, but it's not that easy. As it gets bigger and bigger, you've got to have a show. You have, have to have content. You've got to line up interviews. Um, and you've got to have a show out either uh, used to be on Fridays and we moved them to Mondays. You've got to have that show launching on Monday. You can't just do it anytime you want. People like to know when's your next show. So um, once again, before I go over to the audio, um, we launch our radio show on Mondays and we make a ver video version of that. Then on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is either RV Travel Quest or RV Travel Buddy. This is an RV Travel Buddy video. Why? Because it's a tips video. It's a resource. When we do those kind of videos, we call them RV Travel Buddy. You'll see the beginning started out with RV Travel Buddy. If it's RV Travel Quest, it's more personal. It's more Sherry and I when we travel. So on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will either be Travel Quest or travel buddy and then on Fridays we reserve for 360s now if you see a video from us coming over the weekend those are our old what we call our landscape pictures the pretty sometimes we produce a video of just a uh, time-lapse or something it's just beautiful and it's not part of our story but it's just really fun to watch and some people like that it's the kind of videos where you can just grab a cup of coffee and say oh that's I wish I was there 
those videos will launch on the weekend uh, we don't expect big traffic from those we just expect we just do those for the enjoyment of a pretty video a lot of times we'll put a soundtrack to it uh, it just depends what it is I think recently if you look in our uh, playlist you'll see that we either did we did a time a series of a couple of time lapse and we did another one um, I don't remember <laughs> There's lots of videos, but if you see a video from us on a weekend, it's because it's just a pretty video and we're uh, not trying to, you know, it's not for everybody. So anyway, so let's move on to podcasting. Okay, this is where I do my podcast. So sorry for the mess. I'm trying to get these videos done and just throwing things everywhere. So here is the pride and joy of sound. This is our newest investment, is our newest microphone podcasting workstation. So <laughs> as soon as I set this up, the first thing my wife does is like, uh, so you took my kitchen table. <laughs> it's like, yeah, sorry. So the thing with podcasts is you have to get a little anal about having good sound. So if you listen to our earlier shows, it was okay. We used a microphone that looked like this, but it was designed for music, musicians, which means picks up all the sounds all around. So every time Cinder would walk by or the kitty would jump on the table, you'd hear all the sounds in, the, in this RV. And so, um, once again, I told you when you start a podcast, you got to find out if you want to do a podcast in the first place. It sounds nice, but there's a lot of work behind it. And uh, so... We finally put this new microphone in. It's about a three, four hundred dollar mic. It's called a uh, a Heli mic, and it's once again recommended by some of the top podcasters out there. Software we either merge from the Roland Five that I showed you earlier. Software wise, we have and we also keep a mixer over here. Uh, this mixer is designed to blend several microphones. We also can blend music into it. We have software that we can actually, if we're doing a live show, we would uh, uh, blend our music as we're talking. We don't do a live show. Well, we kind of do, but we don't. We break it up into, uh, into sections because uh, of the way we edit and the way we merge our music. So... Um, but we are capable of just doing... I could have Sherry cross me. We could easily be doing a interview live and recording for an hour. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be doing that right away because sometimes we can get part of a show cut a day or two early and then another section of it the next day. Maybe we have some research or waiting for some data to come in. Uh, we also have sponsors and companies we work with. Sometimes they're late with their information. So we can start cutting a show as early as Thursday or Friday, um, finish it all up by Sunday, upload it that night, and it launches in the morning. And, not, and two things happen. We create the actual podcast, which is an audio show. Then we also, not only that, we add a header, on the page and then we make uh, a video render a video out of it so we've got to upload the podcast and the video the night before you see it on monday morning and depending on what kind of internet we have it could take a while so we have to plan that out and sometimes i've stayed up till one or two o'clock in the morning uh editing and uploading just to make sure the show launches at five o'clock in the morning so that's probably more than you want to know about <laughs> the cameras and stuff that doesn't cover everything we have booms we also have a full-fledged umbrella lighting system we use for big interviews and the last thing i haven't told you about is i have a, a wish list and my next camera that we're trying to do um well I'm trying to do we'll probably be getting i'm still doing research on it. it's called the canon g40 and the reason we want that camera is to kind of take it to the next step. 
you'll see we have a video out there if you get a chance and I don't know when you get to see this video one's called Steelhead Falls and it says bonus bonus footage on it and so when you get a chance go look at the bonus footage so back in 2008 9 we had um, I was helping my son as he was getting into um, video and he long since has got his degree and created a video studio himself and he does the professional stuff but at the time we both had very very good production uh, video cameras uh, we're talking like three thousand dollar cameras and we went down to Stillhead Falls in 2009 or 8 I think it was and we did a whole lot of shots down there and so there's kind of like two kinds of shots you can do. There's the video, like let's say we'll, we'll go into the Stillhead Falls, and you take pictures of the falls, and you go, oh, the falls are pretty. Nice shots. Well, then there's a whole other way of looking at the falls, all the different angles and through the bushes and from the ground, and, 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 um, and you need a special uh, video camera that can go into m manual mode. Well, I didn't want to get a big bulky production uh, camera again and I stumbled upon the G30 and now they've come out with the G40 that will go into manual mode and does everything pretty much those big cameras did but it's still only about that big and so I believe that's going to be our next camera I'll, when we do get that camera I'll do a camera overview like I've done with our other camera uh, the Brino we did a video about that the Canon that you're watching this on is uh, also a video we did and so we try to share some of the stuff not for bragging purposes but to show you why we bought that a uh, piece of equipment so I hope you got a kick out of that I hope it wasn't too much uh, it's really I, I'm not really into part numbers and, and stuff we just we buy it we get it we match it up I know some people are really into numbers and, and part numbers and stuff and I apologize if we're not that way it's just as we grow we just get what we need and hopefully we're doing a good job for you so with that in mind I'm Rob Scribner from RV Travel Buddy and RV Travel Quest thank you very much for watching I hope we uh, you got a kick out of that and I hope it kinda helps you think about what you want to do in the future and uh, if you have any questions about any of the cameras that I showed you uh, please use the comments below. So once again, Rob Scribner, take care. Don't forget to subscribe and have a great day. Bye guys. Hey, thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to discover our other YouTube playlist. RV Travel Buddy, which is tips, resources, and services. RV Travel Quest, where you can follow Rob and Sherry on their real RV travel experiences. RV Living Mission Series, which teaches people how to prepare to be an RVer in the future, the insane RV360 videos, our amazing RV.TV, where amazing stories come from RVers, and last but not least, RV Talk Radio. And most of all, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again.